a long journey, but this build is beginning to take shape. We started out with a Porsche chassis and a sterling roof. Victor loved the way this roof opened and he wanted to build a whole car around it. So, that's what we did. Because we're planning on making a mold of the body in the end, it's allowed us to use whatever parts we want to design the car. Now, we just got a part that doesn't belong. Making a lot of progress on this car, but looking at it front row center, we got a huge issue with this roof contour. Some of the concept cars Victor had shown me pictures of had this wraparound windshield detail, and you know, that's what I'm throwing on the table. Right off the bat, I tell Victor I got this idea that the windshield, you know, could look like a motorcycle visor on a helmet. You know, they go up and down, and it looks space age. So by putting this round window, like you said, like a windshield of a of helmet, right. that would match this perfectly. Oh, Everything's yeah. curved, supercar, wrapped around window. The window comes up to get in and out, man. Sure. That would be like off the chart. So can you achieve that? Well, I don't even ask. My question is, <laughs> when? <laughs> when are you gonna do it? Well, I think first we'll have to make a paper template. Just like the rest of this car so far, we're gonna build off of the Sterling body, create something new. Victor and I discussed the possibility of using another vehicle's windshield. I just don't see anything that looks like spaceship stuff. So we're gonna have to build it ourselves. The thing is, if the windshield is just one piece and it opens with the roof, that's super trick. <laughs> you just don't see that on the street. So that's the thing. This is the pitch of your windshield at this point. So you see it's not a very big uh, no, visual. No, well, let's move it back six inches. Move that line to there. Drive right to okay, the Okay, right there. Okay, now we got a not more pitch. See, there we are. Now that's more. In the core, it's going to come up. Just like the rest of the car, the Sterling is now just a template tool. So I'm laying up cardboard on it because I know it's even and symmetrical and just seeing what kind of curve it'll offer. With this idea of this curved windshield, you know, a flat rooftop just isn't gonna look right. It's gonna look like somebody sawed the top of the car off. So it's gotta all contour together to complement the nose. Like you're saying, and you got your freaking rise. Yep, we got our little arc there. So I'm just gonna make an exact template of this window and we'll flip it over to that side so this curve that's coming up around the back will then turn around the exact opposite. I think Victor's main goal with this roof is to do something you just don't see. You know, he uses these words, these big words like iconic, timeless, <laughs> supercar. His loose perception of reality is easily translated by my four hands. So you want to create like a little dome yes. shape off the yes. roof, like up there, like That's that. That's right? it. That's what's missing. I love the idea of this mock-up with the cardboard for the one-piece wraparound windshield. It's exactly what I was thinking. Motorcycle helmet visor. I think it's a keeper. Finally, we get rid of the ugliest part of the car, man. Let's just bury that sterling. We bury the rest of it. Just don't dig it up again. Dude, that was my inspiration. <laughs> the Sterling started the whole project, oh, yeah. so that hurts. <laughs> and the poor Sterling, how do you think it feels? Oh, it's done. I think I sold Victor on this idea. There's nothing to it but to do it. I sold Victor on this concept. All I have to do is accomplish it. So this is the template for the windshield, you know, this cool visor-like wraparound deal. The challenge here is getting this template into a good plastic template. It needs to be like a rainbow. The plan here is to get down with my bad self. I got some acrylic sheet. I'm gonna make a better template that should represent this windshield in its three-dimensional grandeur. The reason I'm using acrylic is because it's very representative of how any material that supports itself will curve. The potential to create a glass piece in the end is totally possible by forming this out with acrylic sheet. 
I was saying with the paper template, this acrylic template still needs to be refined. The main thing I was working with here was this surface and the wraparound to create the new roof. You can see here, all these mismatching spaces is just the simple second time around on the template. All I'll have to do is just take a tape border and increase it by that much all the way around. But that's the thing. We had to know what the plastic was gonna do on the roof edge before we could build it. I'm really happy with the way this windshield experiment is coming together. The whole thing is getting the roof contour to complement it. That's what's really gonna sell the concept. So we know what the windshield's gonna do as far as what the acrylic template will allow. And now to build this top of the roof contour, you know, there's a million ways to go about it. You know, my first thought, maybe find another car roof, or maybe a giant shape that has this dome I can splice off and use. But uh, I've got another idea, and I really want to try it out. Nothing says supercar like a big bundle of cardboard on the roof. I had 10 gallons of this stuff from another project. What it is, it's a two-part expanding foam. So sort of like you put your catalyst in the body filler and mix it. That's the same process here. It's 50-50 ratio, one part to one part. I just don't really know how much it expands. Like, will this amount become that amount? I don't know. I like experimenting, bottom line. <laughs> So if I do two of these of A and B, that's a gallon. I think two gallons. So that's four quarts of that. Two of those. And now I start mixing. And the whole thing is if I pour it on the car like this, fully liquid is just gonna go through all the cracks. I don't know, I'm just mixing it up. We'll see what happens. I still got four gallons left. It just became twice the volume. Here it comes. Get ready. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize it was gonna be that fast. Wow, that was fast. Oh, we're gonna need more, totally. It's not stressing the barrier. It's growing just perfect. Uh-oh. We're about to experience a breach. It's still growing. The whole thing is, this is a huge challenge. It's the challenge of the lifetime, you know? Just trying to keep it festive, keep it lively, you know, always thinking of nonsense to get you through the moment. For the little three-inch rise we needed, <laughs> I think we've substantially overshot our goal. Shoot for the stars and you just right reach the moon. <laughs> what we have here is a giant lump of expanding foam that is cured on the roof of this sports car. I think it's pretty clear the muffin is cooked. <laughs> Definitely like one of those things you see coming out of the oven. Totally strong. That's why I use this foam, because it'll be able to be carved back and be a really good base for whatever we do, mold-wise. That's like Christmas morning. We're unwrapping that gift that you didn't want. <laughs> that gift from grandma, you know, the socks or the slippers, that's what we're doing. We're just, what, how am I gonna work with this? Time to get medieval on this. Great sculptors of yore, starting with a giant block of marble. I will create a masterpiece. The crazy thing is I only need about that much of this giant slab, so it's gonna take a while. It's safe to say I overshot the foam element considerably. <laughs> this is a lot of work cutting it back. It's pretty dusty. The good thing is I got these big air cooler fans from Port-A-Cool and they are moving the air and keeping things fresh. It's kind of like chiseling through rock at this point. You know, you're just chunking away, getting these big shapes broken off. 
Got to smooth it out and get a little bit closer. That's what I'm going to use the belt sander for. Just eyeballing it. I know as long as I stay bigger than it needs to be, you know, anything goes. Wow. You got the sterling out of the sterling. As I'm getting sort of close, it's perfect timing. Victor gets here. I'm always monitoring his, uh, his reaction. Looks positive so far. I put foam on the roof and then sculpted that back. So this isn't filler. This is a two-part foam. You mix it up and pour it on the top. You know, him just walking in, I'm trying to explain. You know, he doesn't know where I've been. I'm trying to explain where I'm at. You know, see this, this angle, this complements that, and he's responding. You know what, stand back and look at the side, because it's actually, check this out, I love the way that comes up mm -hmm. and then back down. It gives you like, man, that car's going, Fast. and it's not even moving. Yeah. And no more sterling in the sterling in the sterling. Nope. Now it's just, uh, I don't know, what is it? Concept, baby. Here, check this out. Now you get the look. That's why I got a, I got a solid black, so you kind of get the effect oh, of it cool. having a tinted window. That's the thing about making a model. You don't really understand what it's made of in the end. Pulling this protective coating off, you see a nice glossy surface. It looks like a windshield. That sells it. Yeah, see, now it looks like a windshield because it's got that black reflection, right? Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. I mean, that's super car. Yeah. Everything I wanted. The round windshield, we got the curve on the top. Needs a little bit of adjustment. Yeah, but now looking at it, you know, that's the whole thing. This just being a mock up with templates. Just with the way that the roof comes together, check out this line with the tape. You know, like that. So that this, this was the, this was the roof and this line was kind of going back into the fender, you know? Yeah, because what it almost looks like there's a flat top on it. That's a good idea, but watch you stand back there. Check this out. Victor's always talking about when you walk in the door and look at it, where does your eye go? What needs to be improved? He's saying that the windshield in the rear portion could be contoured a little, could be swept down a bit. And the more he's laying it out, it makes perfect sense to me. It does look way more streamlined. Let me spray that top of the window gray. We'll peel back the tape, and then we'll know what, what we're, we're dealing with. This is exactly why Victor comes in periodically. He's not there for the monotony. He comes in, does a few checks, and then we move forward. And it gives you more roof. It actually looks like, you know, more structure on that thing. The modification in the back of this windshield area is just a perfect example of how things flow, according to Victor. <laughs> One line makes the car look segmented, broken front to back. Another line makes it just follow through down into the rear portion. Yeah, so the whole thing is now on the other side of the car, it makes the roof look like it's just got a little cap on top. And by lowering that window line, it fits. Everything just flows right into the rear corners. It's in last little details to make these designs like work. Really happy with the way this roof concept has come together. There's just one more thing I got to accomplish to wrap this thing up. Finished the bodywork on this roof. I'm really happy with this. It completely negates the look of the Sterling and it complements the nose perfectly. Victor's call with this line revision for the windshield nailed it. Definitely want to add some flavor to this cowl area of the car. I got a couple ideas. I'm just going to do something, and we'll see how it develops. From the start, you know, Victor's coming up with all these crazy concepts. You know, he wants this or that or the other thing, but he doesn't give much solid direction in the beginning stages. So that's my opportunity for artistic license. You know, I got an idea about the way it should look, and I'm just going to build it out. At least we'll get somewhere. Victor wants to revise it. We're threatening to run away from home. It's a uh, hobo stick with a bag thing. You going somewhere? I guess so. Beat it, kid. In 
simplest terms, what I've been thinking about is creating like a cowl induction look on modern cars. Air intake is, is right below the windshield and I think this would benefit from a styling cue in that vein. What I want is for this windshield angle to be replicated in the vent here. So this comes down, steps up a little, and goes right down. So that's out of line. Take it off. I mean, no mercy here. That's why we're building this model. First things first is to just hack away a large portion of the car that we don't need. What this is doing is twofold. It's shortening the perceived length of the hood, but by sectioning it down, it also makes the car look lower. It makes the windshield dive down. You know, it's aggressive. I mean, that vent shape, that's it. I, I love that. I just don't know what the client's gonna say. He's a little back and forth on things. I'm into it. This thing took it from this bland kind of hood detail to something representative of a supercar. The thing is, with this just being a mock-up, I wanna throw everything I can at it. You know, this is gonna be a vent. Just using this honeycomb mesh, which is laying around the yard, you know, what it's doing is just representing a grill, and that's what's gonna be here in the end, some type of vent. Spray it gray, just to stand back and check it out, you know, matches the rest of the tone of what we're building. Looking at it, it kinda needs another element. What this thing needs is something to make it look more faster. It needs fins. Coming from the center, like that. Just like on the tail end piece, check this out. Always thinking about how to tie this whole car together. We've got this awesome rear exhaust port look thing. It's got these fins on it. It looks rocket ship inspired, like it's flying or something. So hey, why not put some more fins on the car, you know? I want these fins coming out of that vent I just built. Same idea. This is one of the cutoffs from those things. I'm just gonna transfer that right on to that. Put these things in place and see if we got something. Oh, that's mean, that's aggressive. That is the flavor. The whole thing with this is design, you know? I did a pour with this piece. We're holding session here. <laughs> Can you just compose yourself for two more minutes? That's all I ask. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, same process as I did with these. Um, cut it, router it, sand it down, put it on the car. Pretty simple. These little cowl fin things, you know, I want to make them out of aluminum. I want everything front to back to have the same stylized aluminum element. Big chunk of aluminum plate, cut it out, finish it, router it, finish it again. These little cowl fin things, you know, I want to make them out of aluminum. I want everything front to back to have the same stylized aluminum element. I got about five of these things made, and just as I'm finishing them, Victor's here. Yo, what's up? What's happening? What the heck did you do to the car now? Well, we were talking about having a vent, right? Victor, understandably, doesn't know what's going on. You know, I'm working on these aluminum shapes, explaining what's happening. He's just kind of trying to take it in. Well, it needed something. You know, to me, the hood was just looking too long, so I created this vent around the windshield. And what's this all about here? I don't think I want cardboard here. He's all questions at this point. You know, I'm trying to describe it. It's like, hold on, let me just put them on a car, show you what's up. 
So just like with these cardboard templates, you know, I made five of them and we can space them out however you think is appropriate. You know, they're oversized. So, you know, something like this. That way it's like however we fit it out, you know, they look like they're jutting out of the vent, you know, aerodynamic. What do you think? Yeah, I really like that. That's like, it gives it another dimension. Look at now the car's jewelry, like yeah. flying without flying. I didn't want a spaceship. <laughs> I just want a supercar. You gotta know I'm in the spaceship <laughs> business, man. Victor really likes this shape that I cut out of the front. He loves the idea of these aluminum fins. Uh, he's just got a couple ideas about their final contour. At this point, it's simply trim and fit. You know, we're gonna make the taper on this double-sided instead of like the bullnose flat front, and it's very minimal. Same look, just a refined concept. Yeah, what a difference too, and by doing that, the air comes in through the, you know, the front of the grill, out to the roof, and over. It's like, I could see this in a wind tunnel. All these refinements look really cool. Victor's totally on board with it, you know? Everything's really coming together. The big issue is there's a huge hole in the side of the car. There's nothing there. What's coming up could be the biggest challenge yet. We got a little something. Check it out. Carhartt collar. Oh, yes, he's all about it. Check that out, high fashion for dogs. But wait, there's more. You know what that is, don't you? It smells like a fresh, new dog bed. What do you think about that? Oh yeah. Oh wait, you're twice the size you used to be. You like it? Very good. <laughs>